Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to round two of the Tillotson T4 Esports Series 2023. Coming to you live from virtual Wackersdorf here in the heart of the Bavarian countryside. Just 35 kilometers from the Czech border and 140 kilometers north northeast, north northeast of Munich. Here we are, Wackersdorf. My name is Simon Byford. Alongside me today in the virtual commentary box is Stuart Price, and it is our absolute Absolute pleasure to you through the action this evening. Coming up for you this evening, we have qualifying for the T4. A good turnout this evening with uh, roughly, I think, 30 or so drivers round this fantastic circuit. 1190 metres in length, 11 turns, 7 to the right and 4 to the left. 5 feet of elevation change, so a very, very flat circuit, only about a metre and a half of elevation change there. Competitive lap times around here, you're looking at the low 56s. We saw in practice Kelly Atkins dipping into the 55s with a 55.9 second lap time and Hardy Mimassi very close behind with a 56.0. So they are ones to watch in qualifying. Now Atkins does have prior form around here. The winner in the final at this very circuit last July when we raced it in round five of six championship and uh, it's it probably also worth mentioning Stuart the prizes on offer this evening because we do have some nice cheeky steam gift vouchers much like last time out don't we we do yes uh, it's a very interesting one on that one so the winner of this one I believe I will have to get you to correct me if I'm wrong is 100 euros for the winner of this finals once I get through to that then down from that, we have a list of others. So it does go all the way down to, I believe, 10th position, if I'm right. So correct me on that one. So it goes all the way down to 10th position. Not sure on the specific ones and the other ones, unless you do, unless you know that one. I'll let it pass back to you if you know the specifics from first, uh, second onwards. Yeah, so it's set to be 100 euros a uh, Sting gift voucher for the winner of the final today, and then 50 euros for second place, 30 euros for third, and then down to 10 euros for fifth, and then sixth through to P10. Each get a five euro Steam gift voucher, which is a very nice prize indeed, particularly for uh, just giving up an evening to race these fantastic T4 C1 chassis with their virtual TPP 225 RS engines around here. Virtual Wackersdorf. A fantastic circuit, say 11 corners, very, very flat and very conducive to good racing. We are waiting for qualifying to get underway, so the racing will have to wait for just another while and uh, then we'll get to see these T4s being pushed to their absolute limit. Like I say, 56 seconds is roughly a, uh, a very, well, it's a very competitive time overall. And uh, I believe we will be going to qualifying. Yes, here we are in qualifying then, Stuart. And with three minutes on the clock, the drivers aren't going to have an awful lot to get these T4s heated up and up to speed and set a competitive time, will they? No, absolutely. I mean, they're already setting sub-56 seconds. Atkins up currently with the fastest lap on the circuit. Not much separating the top five, to be honest. It's under half a second quite considerably. And even then, top ten still just over half a second so very close together which should bring along some absolutely fantastic racing if they can keep that close together through the race I'd expect they will we should see some well quite frankly brilliant racing on that front it's two and a half minutes left as we said Kali Atkins very much a front runner in this contest the only man to dip into the 55 second times in qualifying and already or in practice, excuse me, and already managing to do that again in qualifying with only, well, really one lap as we look at him cross the line. Is he going to be able to improve that time? And uh, well, the answer is no. And unsurprisingly, because 55.9 is a very, very competitive time. But look at Hardy Mimassi, who's currently running in second, who we're watching with, well, an incredibly small gap of... 16 one thousandths of a second that really is very very small indeed and uh, well Hardy Mimassi really in the running to uh, give Callie Atkins a run for his money as he rounds the uh, final few corners in the second sector as uh, we have Heron going into position number six just behind Rene Gilbert 
with uh, only about a tenth of a difference between them. So, again, another battle emerging sort of on the fringes of the top five. The sort of five, six, seven and eight are all usually very close together in T4s. You have normally two, uh, two main races, one at the front and then one in the middle of the top ten. And then everyone else just sort of sorts themselves out. And with a minute left to go, it is going to be sort of last chance saloon, a penultimate lap for Hardy Massey. And uh, one last chance after this to try and dethrone Callie Atkins. But it is going to be a very, very tough ask as Zane Khan steps into position number three with a time of, let me take a look at that, 56.2. That is a very competitive time, but still, well, 0.222 off the leader and two tenths behind, <clears throat> excuse me, two tenths behind Hardy Massey in position number two. And uh, well, Hardy Massey still managing very, very well. Kelly Atkins in the number 30, very, very quick driver. We saw him in uh, Marienburg very recently in the IAMI Euro Series, managing to win a race in the wet from 14th and oh. uh, to win by 10 seconds, which was a fantastic achievement. And he's really showing that pace in the T4s, isn't he? Absolutely, because he's just gone even faster than his previous lap, right at the death dead. He's up at 55.878, managed to pull a tenth on Hardy Massey in second. And it stays that way by the looks of it, so that's a fantastic ball for Carly Atkins, certainly. Certainly is, and as they come across the line, it will set the qualifying order for both of the two heats. And obviously the results of those two heats setting the grid for the final where those steam gift vouchers are up for grabs for the top 10. And you have to say, Kyle Atkins doing a sterling job in the very short amount of time that he's had to secure that pole position with the fastest lap of the day so far. As Stuart said, a 55.8 really is a, a majestic time around here. Momentum very important in the T4s, and it seems like Kyle Atkins has been able to, uh, to make the most of that. As uh, qualifying is over, Kyle Atkins takes pole for both of the heats in front of Hardy Mamassi in position number two. That's going to be a fantastic battle to watch out for with Heat 1 coming up next. Don't go anywhere. It's intense, the spray. You know, when I first was trialling the spray as we were going along, I'd spray it on wherever I needed it, right? <laughs> You've got to know the amount, you know what I mean? The spray, I would say, would be immediate. You have a bang, you're not taking a bruise or an impact. It's a little bit, you get to know about it, but I was very, very cold. 
But then after it starts settling in, you start feeling loose in the limbs, everything starts feeling awake, calm, cool. You go back, you know what I mean? And now I'm a pro with the spray. I love the product. We can't manufacture your victory or distill your determination. We harness powerful natural resources to unlock true human potential. I couldn't put my name behind something that I didn't believe in and give it to my fans. I have a lot of loyal fans and a lot of loyal supporters and I just couldn't. And especially in this category. But we've been going back and forth for many years now with, with Tidal Sport. Like I said, I'm not going to touch it unless, unless it's correct here, you know what I mean? So it wasn't until I started getting real benefit out of this that I was all in on it as well. I'm starting to realise there's something really, really, really magical in this spray. And yeah, it just solidified my belief in the product and that's it. Tillotson has been fueling innovation for more than 100 years and we're continuing that tradition by expanding our product range consisting of Tillotson carburetors and engines, the T4 cart packages and PVL ignition coils to include Tidal Sport products because Tillotson are now the Irish importer for Tidal Sport. Developed alongside Conor McGregor, Tidal plant powered cryotherapy spray is a revolutionary new pre and post workout recovery spray to rejuvenate your joints and muscles. Go to tillotson.ie forward slash shop to get yours today. This is not just a sport. This is not for just the athlete. We all feel pain. We all feel something. This is, you know, you could wake up and sleep on your arm a little bit funny and you feel a little. This is, these are the type of things that I've been using it for. The sprays here and there and just, you know, just to keep everything. But I gave it, a, like I said, I wasn't going to just put my name behind anything. And that's it. Spray it straight away upon waking. You know, it just, like I said, it just switches you on.
When everything hurts, you need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy, and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. When everything Welcome back, folks, to Tillotson Esports Euro Series Round 2 here at Vakersdorf. We are ready for Heat 1, and it is Kali Atkins who starts on pole in front of Hardy Massey and Daniel Amore in position number 3. Zane Khan lines up in P4 in front of Remy Gilbert and Alex O'Grady in position number 6. Lewis Werrell lines up in P7 in front of Nathan Maximin. Archie Heron and Lucas Blanford rounds out the top 10. Row 6 is occupied by Isaac Phelps and Jake Fluis. David Vishaw lines up in unlucky P13. Let's see what he can do from there. Daniel Kelleher, the Irishman, starts in 14th in front of Josh Bugembe and James Bell in 16th. Joel Hull lines up in 17th in front of Flynn McClumper in position number 18. Jake Wood starts in 19th in front of Philip Ganner, Theo Lestrange, Camto Chiquera, Tommy van der Strauss and Albin Radley. Position number 25 is occupied by Sam Aston in front of TJ Traffer, Benito Gill and Keith in position number 28. Keith, uh, obviously not uh, not the only name that Keith goes by. So I'm trying to find on my entry sheet uh, where Keith is. Never mind, we are going to... Oh, never mind, we're not going to the race start because there's still someone in the garage. Anyways, here is the, uh, the countdown. Four, three, two, and a one. We get ready to go. The klaxon sounds and we're away and it's a poor start from P2. A dreadful start. He's not gone anywhere. Oh my goodness me. Hardy Mimassi's had an absolute shocker as they get down into turn number one. So far, reasonably clean. Someone taking to the grass in the background there. Zane Khan has got off to uh, a fantastic start, getting up to position number one from fourth in front of Daniel Amore. Excuse me, Daniel Amore's had a brilliant start. Hardy Mimassi has only dropped down to third. So that means to say that Kali Atkins has had an absolute shocking start from P1, he dominated in practice and in qualifying, and now he's falling down the order like nobody's business, as there's a move there, potentially, for position number five, as we ride on board with uh, Hardy Mimassi falling down from position number two into position number three. Not a uh, difficult uh, thing to recover from, but nevertheless, he does have the uh, Steam gift cards to compete for. So I'm trying to find where Callow Cal Atkins has fallen all the way down to 13th. The man who had a torrid time last, out in Chris, last time out in Christianstadt has had an absolute shocking start as we see Harley Mimassi going up the inside of Daniel Moore. Mimassi in the pink overalls and Moore in the blue and he gets the move done into the right-hander of turn number one. Fantastic move there by Harley Mimassi. Cutthroat stuff as we see that's, oh my goodness, that's Ray Gilbert getting on the grass as they make their way through turn three and enter sector two for the second time. And this battle starting to simmer down now. Zane Khan breaking away. Just over a second is the gap. Well, hovering in and around a second between Khan and Mimassi. Daniel Lamore making his way to position number three. With Remy Gilbert as he makes his way to turn number four. And uh, so far, this race, having thrown up an awful lot of action with, with, um, who was it? excuse me, Callie Atkins falling all the way down to position number 13. But now, as we look to Hardy Mimassi, who is being chased down by Daniel Amore, coming into the first corner. No move from Amore just yet. He's probably going to bide his time and wait until one of the last laps. As, uh, that will give him the best opportunity. He's going to sit in the toe of Hardy Mimassi in front. Slipstream can be very, very important in the T4s as uh, momentum really is the name of the game. Getting rid of that air resistance can provide an awful lot 
of advantage. Stuart, what a fantastic race start that was. What have you made of it so far? I mean, that was, to be fair, very, very clean start on that one. And it's sort of settled down into a bit of a train now, which is excellent. But there was a brilliant start by Khan to even get up into first. And it's just a shame the Kelly Atkins has dropped down. He is now back up to 10th, so he has gained three positions over that entire range of the start. But I'm not too sure whether he's going to have enough lap times to even get back to where he was within the five minutes that we now have remaining. I mean, it is a difficult ask. Like I mentioned earlier, he did win from 14th in Marienburg just a few weeks back in the rain. But uh, with less than five minutes to go, it is going to be a big ask for Callie Atkins to make his way back up into a reasonable position to put him in a good stead for the finals. Now, he will be on pole for the next race as well, as the grids will remain the same. As we see Remy Gilbert getting quite out of shape on the exit of turn number five we ride on board with him looking back into the clutches of Lewis Wirrell behind who is going to be looking to gobble up that fifth position from him As, uh, well I mean it's technically the battle for second but you have to say it's a rather big gap between second and third or uh, excuse me no one no, no that is uh, an accurate statement to make as we see Lewis Wirrell still chasing down Rene Gilbert who is currently trying to make a move on Nathan Maximin now he can't get that done along the start finish straight. Is he going to go for a move into turn number one? No, he's not. He thinks better of it. Difficult place to overtake into turn one. The hairpin is a place that we've seen moves before. But the last, not on this occasion. Everyone being reasonably well behaved. Not like the uh, typical T4 esports drama that we see. But oh, look at that. Remy Gilbert looking for a move up the inside of Nathan Maximum. Now can't get it done on the exit of turn number four. Still attacking though through the... 7-8 chicane down into turn number nine and this section of track did used to be a series of bends but it has become straight through recent development and look at this fantastic camera angle really does show how close Rene Gilbert is to the back of Nathan Maximum and with three minutes left in this race it is all to play for for the battle for the top four positions Nathan Maximum coming under serious pressure from behind. Now, Rene Gilbert isn't someone who we thought would really be up there, but he's so far making fantastic progress, Stuart. Oh, that's a move. That's potentially going to be a move, and that's contact oh. going into the turn. There's still some time behind as well with Werrell and O'Grady now potentially going to be able to bring themselves back into the battle, making this a four-way battle rather than a slightly split up two versus sort of two behind. We've still got... Gilbert on the back of Maximin and they're very, very bumper to bumper trying to make any way through and I mean all it takes is one mistake and that was nearly the, the perfect momentum to get himself through on Maximin but still currently battling hard trying to make the move down into this sharp right hander back up. He does seem to have a little bit more cornering pace than Maximin when Gilbert I think that's potentially where he's going to be able to make his moves, and especially down the straight right now, coming across the start finish line. As we move forward to Khan, three way battle for the lead with Khan, Mamassi, and Damore all in that group. Mamassi potentially going for a move for the lead and makes it stick. I believe that was Mamassi making it into the lead. It absolutely was. And Khan now down to second, potentially going to lose that to Damore because last lap that was very, very close. And it's certainly turning into a very, very close last sort of final two minutes. It certainly looks to be. And Zane Khan, having had about a second of a lead, has managed to lose it and ultimately been demoted down to position number two as we ride on board with Daniel Amore. And look at that, Hardy Mavassi going off the circuit, trying to keep Khan and Amore behind. Amore up the inside. And that is a fantastic move by the young Englishman who we saw at last year's T4 Nations Cup. And, uh, well, he finished second in his junior class in the final there. So clearly a man with an awful lot of pace. In fact, he finished second here last year in the final at Virtual Wackersdorf. And as they make their way through turn number one, you could cover them with a blanket. Look at this, more on the inside of Mavassi. Can he get the move done? Yes, he can. Khan gets past Mavassi as well. What fantastic racing with only a minute left on the clock. This is absolutely electrifying stuff. Gilbert, Werrell, Maximin and Atkins. Atkins making his way all the way up back to P7. That is fantastic pace by the British Jamaican driver to regain, what's that, six positions almost. Yes, it is six positions, yeah. in fact, in literally eight minutes. That's fantastic going from him. But it is Amore who leads the race with 
37 seconds to go. It is going to be the penultimate lap. This lap, la next lap, will be the last one. Zane Khan still sitting quite happily in P2. He still has time to get this move done. He still has an opportunity to pass them all. As we've seen, anything can happen into that turn two hairpin. Is there going to be a move into turn one? Surely not. Bit more spaced out on this lap, but Khan still relentlessly pursuing them all. Oh my goodness me. And uh, Nathan Maxman, I'm being told, has been involved in some incident. Not entirely sure what is involved there, but it is still Daniel Lamour who leads the race in front of Zane Khan and Hardy Mimassi. Stuart, what can you tell us? Was there something to do with Nathan Maxman there? Um, the only thing I particularly know right now is it's a five second penalty. Now, five second penalties either going to be through track limits or potentially contact with another driver, but I would assume it could potentially be track limits. Uh, we may find out, of course, but I couldn't spot anything specific that would have caused it, at least with contact-wise. So, not sure, but here we go, round the final corner. And Moore is going to take us across the line, but potentially going to be a move by Khan, not quite. Demore taking the win by absolutely a hair's breadth, but that is Demore followed by Khan and Mamassi in third. Coming across the line in fourth is Rene Gilbert, followed by Atkins, a sterling drive by them to get up to fifth. Maximin in sixth, Werrell in seventh, Bell in eighth, Fluid in ninth, and rounding out the top ten is Heron. On that one, so fantastic race on that one, Simon. <laughs> I think that was probably some of the best race we could have hoped for. It really was. That was, I mean, that was typical T4 action. We saw so much of that in, well, I mean, in every series of T4s worldwide, over 30 different regions the T4s can be found in, and that is pretty much copy based of what you can expect as uh, if you. <laughs> managed to take part in a T4 racing weekend in real life. That really was absolutely fantastic. Let's see if we can take a look at the gap. The gap across the line between Khan and Amort was two tenths of a second, I do believe. But you have to say, Stuart, Cali Atkins going from first down to 13th and then up to fifth. That I mean, uh, <laughs> some might argue that this is a bit of a Cali Atkins fan club, but that really was an exemplary drive by him, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, most people down at that point would potentially consider themselves just like, oh, just going to have to bring it home to sort of potentially top 10 might be a good place to be, but certainly not coming from down right towards the back of the grid and bringing it out to P5. I think you'd be very, very happy with that. As much as you may not be too happy with the start, then at least bring yourself back up to only lose, I believe it was three positions that would have been off the start line. I don't know what happened there, though. It was just completely stationary on the start line. <laughs> I mean, it could have been an issue with hardware. It could yeah. have been any kind of issue. But as my grandfather would always say, what you learn the hard way, you never forget. So uh, <laughs> I don't think we'll be Certainly. seeing uh, Cal Atkins making that same mistake in the second heat. Now, he is going to be on pole for that heat. It's important to say that as well, Stuart, because obviously qualifying, as we've said, does set the grid for both of the heats. So he is going to be starting on pole for heat number two and Hardy Mamassi will once again be starting beside him. Let's see how that battle progresses. Stay tuned after this. It's intense. 
the spray. You know, when I first was trialing the sprays, we were going along. I'd spray it on wherever I needed, right? <laughs> You've got to know the amount, you know what I mean? The spray, I would say, would be immediate. You have a bang, you're not taking a bruise or an impact. It's a little bit, you get to know about it, but I was very, very cold. But then after it starts settling in, you start feeling loose in the limbs, everything starts feeling awake, calm, cool. You go back, you know what I mean? And now I'm a pro with the spray. I love the product. Welcome back to Tillotson Esports Euro Series. Here we are at Vakersdorf. Of course, the starting grid for Heat 2 will be set, of course, by the qualification time. So, on pole position on row 1 is Carly Atkins, followed by Hardy Mamassi in second. Daniel Amor taking row 2 in third position with Zayn Khan behind him in fourth. Remy Gilbert in fifth, Alex O'Grady in sixth. Followed by Lewis Werrell on row 4 in 7th position and Nathan Maximin in 8th. Archie Heron in 9th with Lucas Blanford rounding out the top 10. Isaac Phelps in 11th position followed by Jake Fluitz to round out row 6. Row 7, David Vischer in 13th position followed by Daniel Callahan in 14th. Joshua Bugembe in 15th, James Bell in 16th. Then Joel Hull on row 9 in 17th followed by Finn McClumfer on 18th. 19th is Jake Woods, followed by Philip Bagnar in 20th, Theodore Strange in 21st, Camcho Chukwera in 22nd, Tommy van der in 23rd, followed by Alvin Radley in 24th position, Sam Aston in 25th, TJ, TJ Taffy sorry, in 26th, Benito Gill in 27th, and Keith Burke in 28th position for heat number two. As we clear the grids and I say hello again to Simon who is there in the background for this one. I think this could be a fantastic race given by, well, what we just saw for the first heat was absolutely fantastic. Let's hope we get more of that because that would be absolutely fantastic. We did, yeah. I mean, please say fantastic one more time for us there, uh, there Stuart. It was fantastic. But, uh, we were, it was fantastic, certainly. So fantastic, in fact, that during the uh, fantastic ad breaks that you saw there, we were discussing the gap between the top two. Now, I said that it was two tenths of a second as they came across the line. It wasn't because Stuart, um, being absolutely fantastic as a, uh, uh, with eyes, decided to look at the timing boards rather than me and managed to uh, take a peek and see that it was in fact seven one thousandths of a second was the gap as they crossed the finish line to uh, and now that was the gap between the top two so it really does go to show just how close this racing is in uh, the t4s and that is something you know, some people might say oh that's just because it's on the sim it's not we've seen that before in t tillotson at t4s we saw it at last year's nation cup nations cup we saw it uh, in last year's esports such close racing throughout absolutely and here we go drivers lining up on the grid preparing to begin this second heat waiting for every driver to be in their box almost there Got eight minutes three two one we're gonna have eight minutes for the second heat there goes the first one and we are away all drivers away for now Gully Atkins managed to move but there's one driver stalled on the grid of this massive accident at the back but we still got the top four a little bit of bumping into the first corner just trying to find out who's in the lead David and more sorry <laughs> it was my voice Hello, Remy Gilbert. Khan in second and Gilbert just dropping down to third, but we've got a quite considerable battle here. But that means that if I'm right, I'm just trying to spot where our pole sitter is. I'm looking at the live timing and he seems to have fallen down 17. the order again. That is absolutely disastrous for Callie Atkins. Again, you know, I, it really is the commentator's curse. I said what yeah. you learned the hard way, you never forget. But he's made the mistake again. It's an absolutely horrendous time. As we see there, that's uh, Lewis Werrell getting really very much bullied to the outside, I think. 
or uh, it might be Isaac Phelps in fact, in fact it is, Isaac Phelps just getting pushed and barged around oh. all the way, look at that, rubbing his racing, but uh, the stewards might have a different idea about that as uh, Heron gets past Fisher and past Squirrel as well, this is absolutely fantastic racing, look at them, they're two abreast into turn <laughs> one, banging and barging all the way, it's two by two, it's like Noah's Ark, people are going off wide, no one has any idea what's happening, David Fisher in the orange has spun round someone else, oh it is just utter carnage here, this is... I mean, this is kind of the typical T4 action that we expected to see from uh, the eSports boys and girls, as we see coming through this uh, turn number five. There's still action everywhere you look. As we look at Lewis Werrell in the number 25, who is chasing down David Vishaw, who I wouldn't be at all surprised if he's getting investigated by the stewards, as he's bumping and barging, and there's cars up ahead. That's, I think, Heron and Phelps both going at it hard and fast. And, uh, well, I mean, the battle for the podium doesn't really exist, but uh, the battle in the rest of the top ten, it's just absolutely superb. And, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the timing. Cal Atkins already up to ninth again. This is absolutely incredible. Absolutely. And Cal Atkins only six seconds off the leader, so it doesn't put him too far back from potentially making a move and getting up to the podium spot. And more, though, right off at the distance... Well, the distance for Carter, at the very least, with two tenths in the lead. However, you've obviously got um, Khan and Gilbert behind. Hopefully, will be able to just try and make their way back towards him. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that just as we were talking about Kala Atkins' progress. He managed to make his way past Lewis Werrell and is now up into position number seven. And that is a fantastic... Well, I mean, it was a, an appalling start for the uh, British Jamaican driver, but his racecraft really is being put on show and I wouldn't be at all surprised if he can really take home a re very, very very nice prize from the finals for the Steam gift vouchers as we ride on board with Remy Gilbert chasing down Zane Khan and Daniel Lamore. At least this isn't the first time that we've seen Zane Khan at the front, neither is it the first time that we've seen Daniel Lamore at the front. He finished second in the final at this track last year as I mentioned previously and as they make their way through turns four and now five and now six which kind of merges all into one corner you can see just how aggressive remy gilbert is being on the curbs there look at that he's taking so much curbs normally you have to be very very cautious in the t4s with how much curb you take because it can unsettle the car particularly at high speeds but uh, remy gilbert saying i don't have to pay for any damage incurred by hitting the curbs because this is only virtual the carts may not be real but the racing certainly is is seemingly the approach of many, as we see Daniel Lamore still maintaining that lead as we look to Isaac Phelps who's battling for position number five. He's got James Bell just in front of him and Kala Atkins, the, well, I mean, he was slow starting, but he's quick racing. Let's look at this, Phelps on the inside of Bell, surely not, he takes to the grass, he collides with Atkins. They're side by side, coming up into turn number two. Oh, and there is still no show. Oh, well, actually, no, Atkins has managed to get past Phelps. What a move by the British Jamaican driver and he is now up into position number six. This is absolutely fantastic racing. There's someone off in the barriers there. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, Stuart, on the exit of turn number two. Um, but nevertheless, whoever that was is quite suitably in uh, towards the uh, back of the grid and we won't worry about that further. Oh my goodness me, Isaac Phelps getting involved once again with James Bell and Lewis Werrell. Cal Atkins has checked out up in front. He's already got a three-tenth gap. Look at that. And Isaac Phelps with James Bell in front and Lewis Werrell behind. He is really getting his value for money when it comes to battling this race, isn't he, Stewart? Absolutely. We're on board with Phelps now just behind Bell and Atkins. I mean, they're just bump drafting around the corners, which is, well, certainly an interesting one, but there's potentially going to be a move down the inside. Right there, just pushing Atkins out a little bit, and they're still absolutely neck and neck going down into the corner. And that's all. Oh, that's big oh, contact. No. How are they still on the circuit after that? And there's a huge change of positions right now. I think our grade is by Atkins. It's very difficult to just spot who is exactly where. I'm not sure if you've managed to keep track of where any of these drivers are currently and who is leading this battle of what? Well, it's, it's practically a gaggle of six at this point. I mean, my leaders. situational my situational awareness is very questionable, but I can tell you that Heron has got up into position number four, which is fantastic. And David Bishaw in the orange overalls has also inherited massively. He's up to position number seven as we look to position.
position number six, that's Lewis Worrell who's sitting just in front of him, nice and happy. And uh, actually that might not be uh, David Vischer in the orange overalls, as there's still more action into turn number one. And that looks to be James Bell battling with Heron as they come down into turn number two. Oh, it's four abreast nearly. There's people taking to the grass. This is this it's descending into the typical T4 chaos that we're used to seeing last year. There's contact everywhere. The stewards are crying in the uh, officials box at the minute. You can almost <laughs> hear them if you squint your ears hard enough. As we can see, Lewis Werrell getting involved once again with, I think that's James Bell. Someone's gone off and uh, not entirely sure who that is. Calla Atkins, though, has had a terrible time. He's fallen back down to P10. Ooh. Oh, there's someone in the wall. That's James Bell. James Bell's had a shocker. Oh, my goodness me. That is absolutely unbelievable. And Atkins, I believe, inherited two positions off of that, and they're all still well within a second to half a second of each other right now, from sixth down to sort of eighth or ninth. It's six to ninth currently. The battle for six, as you can see on the bottom right of your screen, currently keeping an eye on Werrell here. He's potentially going to make a move down the inside, and that's not a oh, move. No. That's a bit of a punt, I think we'll find. Um, but I... That is a decision for stewards, but I mean, t to be fair, considering <laughs> the amount of sort of little bit of bumping we've had, it's still been fairly clean and the moves have been fairly good. They certainly have, and as we come on to what will be the final lap as they cross the line, Daniel Amore driving a race of his own, keeping out of trouble in front of Zane Khan and Remy Gilbert still. None of them have really got involved with each other. They've just been staring at each other's exhaust. Well, I mean, Daniel Amore hasn't been staring at anyone's exhaust pipes. But um, as they come through to start their final lap, 18 seconds left on the clock, it is going to be the last lap. Is there going to be a move from Zane Khan coming into turn number two? No, there isn't. He holds station for now, maybe waiting until later on the lap, or potentially just holding out because he knows that he beat them all. I think he beat them all in the last heat. So that will put him in very, very good stead for the grid of the finals. Obviously, the better you do in the heats, the better you do in the uh, final qualifying grid, as the names would suggest. Uh, but as they make their way through turn nine for the final time, is there going to be a last ditch move from Zane Khan? The gap is three tenths of a second. I think it's too much. Remy Gilbert doesn't look to be able to do anything from third. So as they round the final corner, surely it is going to be Daniel Amore who crosses the line and he wins heat two in front of Zane Khan and Remy Gilbert in third position. Fourth is occupied by Heron in front of Phelps, Atkins recovering to P6 in front of O'Grady, Mimassi, Maximum and Bishaw rounding out the top ten, but that's not for certain. Oh, more rubbing and racing as they come across the line. Still, everything going right the way down to the wire and that is typical T4 action. You will see that almost everywhere that there is a T4 series in the world and uh, well my goodness me I need something to calm down after that my blood pressure is through the roof trying to keep up with everything that happened there Archie Heron you have to say doing a fantastic job to get up into position number four there and uh, that is going to put him in very good stead for the final isn't it absolutely so it seems in heat oh, seems in heat two there was two five-second penalties handed out. One was to David Vischer for the five-second penalty, and the other one was to uh, Carly Atkins for the five-second penalty in Heat 2, from what I could tell. So I'm not entirely sure what they were exactly for, but that's not exactly going to do much help for Carly Atkins right there, I don't think. No, it isn't, and Carly Atkins' is fantastic driving so far has really been tainted by that because I'm, well, I'm not sure where that's going to put him in the final classifications for Heat 2 but it is going to bump him down the order and that isn't going to do him any favours for where he will be starting in the final now obviously we've seen that he can climb up the grid like he's driving on rails really but uh, nevertheless that is very interesting that he's been given that uh, penalty because you normally associate someone like Callie Atkins with being a very very careful driver he, uh, well, I mean, fair to say, he absolutely wiped the floor with everyone who he competed against at last year's Tillotson T4 Nations Cup in Valencia. And, uh, well, I mean, he didn't get any penalties there because he was always out front. But, uh, obviously, T4 Esports, different business. Backersdorf, a different track. And uh, Callow Atkins obviously getting caught out by some unfortunate incidents there. As, uh, 
a fantastic race comes to an end but the final is still to come so please do stay tuned we can't manufacture your victory or distill your determination we harness powerful natural resources to unlock true human potential. I couldn't put my name behind something that I didn't believe in and give it to my fans. I have a lot of loyal fans and a lot of loyal supporters and I just couldn't, and especially in this category. But we've been going back and forth for many years now with, with Tidal Sport. Like I said, I'm not going to touch it on this unless it's correct here, you know what I mean? So it wasn't until I started getting real benefit out of this that I was all in on it as well. I'm starting to realise there's something really, really, really magical in this spray. And yeah, it just solidified my belief in the product and that's it. Slides up the inside, it's getting very close, he's not made it. Have you ever seen a championship decided like that? Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you could choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Tillotson has been fueling innovation for more than 100 years and we're continuing that tradition by expanding our product range consisting of Tillotson carburetors and engines, the T4 cart packages and PVL ignition coils to include Tidal Sport products because Tillotson are now the Irish importer for Tidal Sport.
Developed alongside Conor McGregor, Tidal Plant Powered Cryotherapy Spray is a revolutionary new pre- and post-workout recovery spray to rejuvenate your joints and muscles. Go to tillotson.ie forward slash shop to get yours today. This is not just a sport. This is not for just the athlete. We all feel pain. We all feel something. Just, you know, you could wake up and sleep on your arm a little bit funny and you feel a little. This is, these are the type of things that I've been using it for. The sprays here and there and just, you know, just to keep everything. But I gave it, a, like I said, I wasn't gonna just put my name behind anything. And that's it. Spray it straight away upon waking. You know, it, like I said, it just switches you on. Everything hurts. You need relief that's deeper than ice. You need Tidal, the cryotherapy spray that goes beyond cold to take control of the pain. This was just easy and it felt so good. I was like, wow, that actually smells good. It's like penetrating into my skin, which I really love. Tidal's powerful plant-based formulation was developed to help world-class athletes recover faster. Tidal cryotherapy spray can contribute to total body recovery because it can alleviate muscle pain, joint pain, even back pain. A 360-degree continuous spray relieves pain in even the hardest to reach areas, dries fast, and lasts. When you get older, the joints start hurting. The spray is easy. You just bring it wherever you are, spray it, and it feels great within minutes. It changes my life in a way that I can still be active and yet not feel aches and pains when I'm sitting there for long hours. Tidal Cryotherapy, available at Walmart and these fine retailers. Visit Tidal.com for locations. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the T4 Esports Series 2023, or the European races. Now, we have just come from a very, very, um, shall we say, exciting heat number two. A lot of incidents similar to that that we've just seen there on, uh, well, through turn three. I'm not sure who that was, but uh, an incident-filled eight-minute heat there is what we've just witnessed. Now, the grids aren't ready just yet because... Well, I mean, unsurprisingly, there's uh, quite a lot of words being had by stewards and uh, some being had by drivers as well. Uh, rubbing is racing is kind of the, uh, the motto that seems to be taken up by a lot of the drivers. But a fantastic, fantastic two heats that we've had so far. And uh, we will be getting ready for 
the 10 minute final, I do believe it's 10 minute final, um, that we'll, we will have as soon as the grids are ready. All of the drivers just circulating around the track at the minute, having a bit of fun. There's nothing to be gained or lost in uh, this little bit of warm up before the final gets under. Oh my goodness me, that <laughs> was... I mean, we saw something similar to that. It's time to plug the uh, last year's Na last year's Nations Cup again. We saw something similar to that there when uh, Roberto Woodstruck Jr.'s cart managed to drive away from him without him being in it and then just fling itself into the barriers. But uh, I've never seen a piloted T4 do that, I have to admit. But um, anyway, probably worth talking a little bit about the T4 Nations Cup. It will be happening for the second year running in Valencia in Spain this year. Obviously, the T4 Nations Cup, where all of the, uh, well, not all of the T4 drivers worldwide, but many of the T4 drivers worldwide come to test their skills against each other and see who is the greatest out of all of them. Obviously, 30 regions world right, worldwide now with T4 series. And uh, I think all of them will have a chance to uh, qualify a certain amount of their drivers for the T4 Nations Cup, which uh, the tickets for that are awarded uh, for national champions. No, oh my goodness me. <laughs> for national championships, if you win uh, particular rounds, you get a ticket to the Nations Cup or... If you're not competing in T-Force currently and you would still like to attend the Tillerson T4 Nations Cup in Valencia between the 21st and the 24th of September this year, you can uh, rent a cart or bring your own to Valencia. All you need to do is go to tillerson.ie and uh, follow the links there and you can apply. There is also a T4 Endurance category which premiered last year, a three-hour endurance race for for teams of between two and four drivers now the cost of entry for that is 750 euros but certainly last time out in Christianstadt there was a discount down to 550 euros I'm not sure is that still active but certainly head over to tillotson.ie to check all of that out now I'm being told that the grids are ready Stuart so that was a fantastic uh, time filler by myself there I'm going to take full credit for that uh, but we do apparently have the grids so here they come now So here we are, back at the same frame as we left off. Here are the starting grids for the final. Daniel Amor unsurprisingly takes pole. He starts in front of Zane Khan in position number two. Remy Gilbert lines up in third place in front of Hardy Mamassi and Archie Heron in fifth. Callie Atkins with a uh, surprising result of sixth there starting. That's a very good result. And uh, Lewis Wuerl lining up in seventh in front of Nathan Maximum, Alex, Alex O'Grady, Isaac Phelps, James Bell, Flynn McClumpher lining up in 12th also. He lines up in front of Jake Fluitt, David Vishaw in 14th, Daniel Kelleher in 15th, Theo Lestrange 16th, Lucas Blanford lines up in 17th, and the ninth row is rounded out by Jake Woods in 18th. 19th is occupied by Josh Bagembi in front of Joel Hull, Kamto Shaquera, Tommy van der Stroos, and Philip Ganner. Albin Radley lines up in 24th position in front of Sam Aston, TJ Taffer, Benito Gill, and Keith Burke lines up in 28th place. A fantastic turnout for this round of the Tillerson T4 Esports Euro Series here at Beckersdorf. 28 drivers taking to the track for the final. And, uh, well, I mean, you have to say, let's go back to Cal Atkins once again. Given the start that he had, remarkable to see that he's managing to start in sixth position, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And given the heat before heat two, he was given a five-second penalty. We do now know the reason. That was a, I believe, collision between uh, Cully uh, and a, another driver. So it caused them to lose positions, which means they got a five-second penalty on Atkins' front. Um, but I think in fifth, if they get a good start, potentially could be very simple for them to move up towards the podium positions. But it all depends. It always all depends on just sometimes pure luck. Uh, sometimes pure luck at the draw and where everyone moves around you and whether you can slot it down the inside on the first corner. It's all complete mix of skill and luck and I am greatly looking forward to the final. Well, it is set to be an absolutely fantastic event. Ten minute final, so two minutes longer than each of the heats. 
<clears throat> excuse me, clean my throat there. That's what uh, <laughs> such intense racing does to you. 16 minutes of action and, uh, well, nearly as many minutes of uh, waiting for uh, stewards' decisions to be made. Obviously, a lot of decisions having to be made after that second heat, but we won't worry about that as we get ready for the final. Now, um, you are going to have to take over for me once again because I, oh my goodness me, someone going off the track there for, uh, well, that's at turn at number four, I do believe. Oh no, excuse me, that's turn number nine. And well, I mean, you have to say the practice session is about as interesting as the heat previous to it, which is somewhat to be expected from T4s because there's nothing at stake here. But um, I am afraid that you're going to have to take over for me again, mate, because I do need to clear my throat. That's all good, um, and it's and it seems, therefore, if I can take over here, that we do now know why Kai has a sort of interesting style. He's not getting the great style because he has an issue with his clutch. So I think that well, it does make sense actually. When looking back at those starts, is just can't move off the start line. But yeah, it's it's always unfortunate to have a hardware issue, especially during races where there is something at stake even if it's not real even if it's not casting on an actual track in the real world they've still you can still win something with that 100 euro card on off of for the top the first place of course getting you the 100 euro steam gift card and it is just going to have to be a case of yeah getting the best start you can with the hardware issues that he has i think Yes, it is very unfortunate, obviously. Now, R Factor 2 and Kart Sim does have an auto clutch option, mm. and I wouldn't be entirely familiar with that, so I'm not sure how that uh, would affect his uh, his race starts, whether that feature is enabled or not. Now, I was trying to look. I'm sure those of you watching the live stream did notice that at turn number nine, someone was just going around in circles. I'm not entirely sure who that is or what they were doing or why for that matter, but uh, we do, well, we are getting ready for the final. We only have two more drivers, well, one more driver now to take to the grid, and we have the five second timer. There's four, three, two, one. And we're away now, and it seems to be a good start from the front row. Cal Atkins with a slow start, but crucially, he has he has actually started. Zayn Khan jumps some more off the start. Hardy Mamassi sitting happily in P3 with uh, a bit of action down by the back there as Remy Gilbert gets up into P3 now. James Bell up into P4. Hardy Mamassi falling back down to position number five. And they're side by side. Someone's off the track on the exit of turn number two. I think that's Flynn McClumper. Oh, never mind. Flynn McClumper is still there in position number nine. Not entirely sure who that is in that case but nevertheless reasonably clean start you have to say that makes a nice change given what we saw in the last heat but it is a Moore who has taken back on Remy Gilbert is still chasing them down though in third position but he does have to defend from James Bell behind and Isaac Phelps who are chasing him down there's a battle of one two three four five six carts there in nearly as many cart lengths as we see up the inside Heron passes Mamassi I think Maximum got Phelps there and now Phelps takes Maximum back as someone spun out on the exit of turn number 10 that's not what you want to see but it is what you see nonetheless in T4 Esports it would seem as we look at Flynn McClumper who's managed to climb back up to P7 is he going to split the difference into turn 1 no he doesn't he gets past Isaac Phelps still sitting behind Nathan Maximum who is currently sitting in position at number 5 Flynn McClumper in the number 19 machine, rounds his way through turn number three. This race immediately settling down, it seems, with uh, Maximum leading this battle for fit, this four-car battle that's quickly turning into a five, maybe six-car battle, in fact, as they come through the chicane, rounding their way through sector number two and into sector number three as we look back to Zane Khan chasing down Daniel Lamore still. Daniel Lamore starting on pole, and Khan starting next to him. And uh, so far, these two have been very, very well behaved. Now, it is worth saying, Daniel Amor did win both heats and the final last time out in Christianstadt. So he does have very, very good form when it comes to leading races and when it comes to winning races. Absolutely. And currently, Amor versus Khan down into turn here. Not going to quite be able to make a move. So Khan there just heading round still on the back end of Amor trying to find pretty much any way through. Either that or they're just going to sit there and just try and keep with them in front and just try and sort of take that time to think and potentially make a move. But it does seem they're cornering a little bit faster. Not much and I don't think it's enough to be dramatically quicker but with the two drivers 
catching behind of Roman Gilbert and Bell, it's not going to be as easy as sticking with the car in front, I don't think. Well, you have to say that uh, Remy Gilbert and James Bell are battling, so that is going to be costing them time. I mean, look at that gap. 1.4 seconds is the gap between, that is, the leader of Daniel Amor and Remy Gilbert. So falling by the wayside rapidly, losing about half a tenth, or excuse me, half a second even, in the final half of that lap. And with five minutes left to go, Remy Gilbert and James Bell really would want to sort it out between them if they are to start making up positions. And as we look to Remy Gilbert, the aforementioned man who is currently sitting nice and happily in front of James Bell, who's being himself chased down by Nathan Maximum in position number five. Maximum, you can never really rule him out. He's always sort of in the top five. So you can expect him to come into this battle if he is given an opportunity to do so. As we ride on board with Zane Khan again, less than two tenths of a second between the two leaders running a race of their own. It has to be said, a very mature drive from the two of them both racing in the British Karting Championships. And uh, with four minutes left to go on the clock, you have to say their experience is on show here as they make their way onto what will be, well, I'm not sure what lap it is for them, but uh, in any case, still managing their races reasonably well. Now, the question is, the Callaway Atkins fan club, where is Callaway Atkins? I think Callaway Atkins may not be racing. I think he may have, oh, oh my goodness me, it seems that Callaway Atkins seems to have retired. Callaway Atkins, on my timing tower, I can see them down in 16th. As we are now looking at them here, with 3 minutes 36 left on the clock, Callaway Atkins chasing down Shaquera ahead. They're still definitely within this race, but I'm not sure they're going as fast as they were before, because they've definitely considerably dropped down the field from the start. So it is the battle for 15th for them. There was a cart around there. Just spotted a cart go flying past cameras. Atkins does seemingly make the move there on Chikura and jumps themselves up into 15th position. Well, that really does show my situational awareness as a commentator, <laughs> thinking that Callie Atkins had retired from the race and he's sitting there in P15. But nevertheless, still quite a poor race, well, a very poor race, losing, well, what's that? 10 positions almost in eight minutes. That's, that's really out of character for Callie Atkins, <clears throat> who we've been following along religiously for the entire live stream really but uh, not having a great time out in Christianstadt last race either and uh, I think he did DNF from from that final uh, which is uncharacteristic of him obviously like we mentioned having won the Tillotson T4 Senior Nations Cup final last year in Valencia showed his pace but seemingly just a little bit of bad luck well a lot of bad luck in this case putting him down and out Bad luck with the starts, bad luck with traffic, bad luck with battling, and it all just adds up to uh, ultimately push him down to 15th place, and he's now sitting about a second behind Philip Ganner, who's in 14th, and uh, about a second in front of Camto Chiquera, which is not where you'd want to be if you're Callie Atkins, but you have to play with the hand of cards that you are dealt as we look back to Isaac Phelps who is battling with Nathan Maximum behind and James Bell in front. James Bell still chasing down Remy Gilbert, but with, well, not much left, well, a minute and 40 seconds left. It is going to be, surely, a day late and a dollar short for Remy Gilbert. The gap to Daniel Lamour in first is almost three and a half seconds, and surely he just has to settle for B3, but even that might be difficult because Remy Gilbert is still under pressure from James Bell and Isaac Phelps. Phelps, though, battling with Bell, and this is giving Remy Gilbert an opportunity to walk away. This is, that's the thing with karting, is it's hugely strategic, particularly in the T4s, where you have less power than other karts, and you very you have to be very, very intelligent with the way that you race. We're still looking at Isaac Phelps, and look at this battle behind Nathan Maximin and Heron, still getting involved with each other. Oh, look at that, Heron down the inside, a fantastic manoeuvre to take Nathan Maximin, Archie Heron there, Fantastic move to get up to position number six. We look back to Isaac Phelps, who is still battling away. James Bell falling into his clutches. Is there going to be a move down into turn number nine? No, there is the hold station for now, but it is going to be the final lap, next lap. So if he is going to do something, he would want to do it very, very quick. Absolutely. Just getting some information on penalties. 
for the final. Lewis Worrell with a five second penalty as well as Daniel Kelleher, Tommy van der Stroes and uh, what seems to be a second five second penalty for to uh, Tommy van der Stroes. All of those four collisions with other drivers. Uh, Werrell for a crash with Bugembe, Kelleher with a uh, takeout of Sam Aston. Tommy van der Stroes for both of those was first of all a crash with Carly Atkins and the second one was a crash with Theo Stretch. So just to give a little update on penalties as we come round the Corda's just heading towards the middle of the final lap. The more with Khan right on the back end. It's all or nothing for Khan now. He's just got to try and make a move at some point. Potentially going to try and get a little bit of a cutback coming round towards the hard right hander heading towards the end of the circuit now. And he's going to potentially just make a move going towards the back end. And this is going to be so close up to the line. Potentially going around the outside. That's moving for a potential cutback. Potentially, obviously, potentials. As we come up to the line, it's going to be close. But just taking it will be Damore on the line, still up in the lead. Khan in second, Gilbert in third. Followed by Bell, Heron, Phelps, Maximin, Mamassi, Fluitt and Blanford to round out the top ten. To be fair, another great race, I think, on that one. I mean, you have to call it what it is. That was dynamite until the end. Less than a tenth of a second. It was my turn to look at the uh, the timing gadget this time. Oh, Whoa. no. Oh, dearie me. I'm not sure who that is. Um, it's, it's, someone's driving the wrong way. That is not oh. what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, heavens. No, no, no. The <laughs> devil would be appalled driving the wrong way. <laughs> Down the start, finish straight at the end of the race. And that is going to be, I mean, once again, the stewards are in tears at that. And, well, I mean, that is really not how you wanted to end out this fantastic <laughs> evening of racing. But nevertheless, Daniel Amore taking the flag in front of Zane Khan by less than a tenth of a second. Now, that is the second time in two races that Daniel Amore has won the final. A fantastic performance by the young Briton, the reigning T4 Junior Nations Cup runner-up. I'm not sure if I've said that in the right order, but nevertheless, a fantastic performance from Daniel Amore to fend off Zane Khan throughout that race, starting on pole and finishing in first. A fantastic race by all, well, <laughs> maybe not all of our races, but a majority of them, obviously driving <laughs> the wrong way down the start finish straight isn't uh, exactly commendable. But nevertheless, we do hope you have enjoyed that fantastic display of T4 action. Please do remember to like the live stream if you have enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe to Alpha Live and do follow us on Instagram as well. Make sure to follow Tillotson on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and TikTok also to keep up to date with all of the T4 action going on around the world. Stuart, what did you make of that? That really was absolutely cracking, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. And just to uh, make a little note on the uh, driving the wrong way down the straight, that was Alex O'Grady. And uh, yes, they were definitely oh, disqualified no. for that one. Um, yeah, so, I mean... yeah, I, don't, I think that's a fairly clear cut. Uh, but yeah, that I think, to be honest, barring the driving the wrong way, I think that was fantastic racing across both heats and the final between that, between some really, really good drivers. It certainly was, and that has been a, an extremely eventful evening for the T4s in the Euro Series. We will be live later on for the T4 Esports US Series, and you can find that live stream on the Alpha Live YouTube channel as well. Make sure to set a reminder for that to follow along with even more T4 action. Aside from that, my name's been Simon Byford. Alongside me has been... Uh, hang on now, I'm not entirely sure of your surname, mate. So let me just. In <laughs> fact, you can do. You can do your. It's good evening from me, and it's good evening from Stuart Rice. Thank you very much, everyone, there for watching. We, we will Fantastic. see you later for the United States one, United States race. Fantastic. That's a brilliant outro, mate. I can't see any fault with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching, yeah. and very good evening to you. <laughs>